we're going to take a look at Amazon DynamoDB. Amazon DynamoDB is a fast, flexible NoSQL database service for all applications that need consistent single digit millisecond latency at any scale. So basically, it's a fully managed NoSQL database that's suitable for document and key value store models. It's perfect for mobile, web, gaming, ad tech, etc. Let's take a look at some of the benefits of DynamoDB. Firstly, it's always stored on SSD storage, so you get great disk throughput. It's also spread across three geographically distinct data centers, so you get high availability built in. It's fast and flexible, and it's suited for read heavy applications. And it's worth remembering that because you might see questions saying, I have a read intensive application with a database, what should I use? And DynamoDB would be the answer. DynamoDB offers two different read consistency types. The first is eventually consistent reads, which is the default, and then there's strongly consistent reads. So what does this mean? Well, when you write something to your DynamoDB, the changes have to be replicated to the three geographically distinct data centers on which DynamoDB is being stored. And obviously this isn't instant. I mean, it takes a couple of seconds or, or less, but it takes some time. So you can choose your read consistency depending on whether you want users to be guaranteed to have the correct data or whether on occasions when they run a query, they might not get the latest up-to-date version. Eventually consistent reads, which is the default, means that consistency is usually reached within one second and repeating a read after a short time should return the correct data and it gives the best read performance. But there is the danger of something called dirty reads, which is where you might request a read and you might not get the latest up to date data. If it's essential that your application gets the latest and correct data, then you can enable strongly consistent reads. And this guarantees that all rights have committed prior to the read taking place. So it could result in a delay to your results being returned. DynamoDB is charged using something called provisioned throughput capacity. When you create a DynamoDB table, you define the capacity that you want to reserve for reads and writes. For write throughput, there's a charge per hour for every 10 units of write capacity. And this equates to 36,000 writes per hour. For read throughput, there's a charge per hour for every 50 units of read capacity. And this equates to 180,000 strongly consistent reads or 360,000 eventually consistent reads. What this shows is that DynamoDB can be expensive for writes, but cheap for reads. So if your application has lots of reads, little writes, and wants to be scalable, then you should be looking at DynamoDB rather than RDS. There's also a storage cost per gigabyte for the amount of data you use with DynamoDB. And here's a very brief real life case study. Duolingo, the online language learning site, uses DynamoDB to store 31 billion items for their online learning site. And they deliver lessons in 80 different languages. And their application hits 24,000 read units per second and 3,300 write units per second. So you can see this is a very read heavy application and is perfect for DynamoDB. In this demonstration, we're gonna take a very quick look at DynamoDB. So we go to the database section and we'll find DynamoDB, which is the managed NoSQL database provided by AWS. So we'll click on that. We're taken to the dashboard. I have no DynamoDB tables, so we need to create a new table. And we need to give it a name. So let's call this simply learn underscore users. That's going to be the name of our table. And we have to give it a key. So a primary key. So I'm going to put in last name as that's going to be the primary key for this particular table. And that's going to be a string. Now down here we have table settings. So we can use the default settings and it says no secondary indexes. Its provision capacity is set to five reads and five writes and it has basic alarms with 80% upper thresholds. So if, an alarm, if one of your read or write capacities is greater than 80% of what you've set, then you'll get an alert. So if we untick this, you can see, we're not gonna take a look at secondary indexes, but the thing that's important is here, we can change the read and write capacity units. 
So if we set it both to one, we'll get an estimated cost of just 59 cents a month there. Conversely, if we push this way up, let's push it up to a thousand, then you see it's $580 a month. So it's fully scalable and you just sort of pay for what you need. So let's just set this to one and one, because this is just a demonstration. And we'll click on create table. Okay, so the table has been created. Okay, so our table has been created. So here we can see the details of it and its creation date. So what we now need to do is we can add items to our table. So we click on the items tab. Okay, and we need to create an item. So you see, this is now, this should look familiar to you because we're basically doing JSON code, which is the same as for the policies in the IAM lesson. So we get to stick in a last name. So let's put, let's put me in, so we'll stick Weaver. And then we can add more values to so append. Let's append a string and we'll put a first name. And we'll put my name in there. And we could put more information if we wanted, but we're just going to leave it as that. So we click on save. And there we are. So now I'm in there. So I'll click on create item. And let's add a new user in here. So we'll call the last name Smith. Let's add another string. So we'll have a new field called first name. And we'll call this person Wendy. And we'll add another row. Let's put a string in there and we'll call this uh, position. So this shows what you can do with NoSQL. You can basically just keep changing things and each row can be different. So we've added enter the position of manager and we'll click save. So now we can see that it's different. So you can do whatever you want, basically. You can add as much or as little information to each row as you wanted. Now you can also do a search. So if we wanted to add a filter, we could say search for last name with a string that equals, and there we are. So we have Weaver Mark. And just to clear that, we just remove that and click on start search again. So that gives you a very basic overview of what you can do with NoSQL. It's unstructured data and you can add as much or as little as you want. Some other things to look at, the metrics tab. Here you can see your read and write capacity, what, what's actually happening. So you can see whether you're paying too much or if you need to be paying too much more. There's the alarms, alarms that we talked about. So they were set up for us. Some basic alarms if the threshold goes over 0 0.08 reads or writes for a 12 minute period, we'll get notified. And here's the capacity. So this is the thing that you'll see in the exam is that DynamoDB, you can just change your capacity and as and when you want on the fly. So our table's up and running, but we could just say we want five read capacity units and five write capacity units. Click save and we're done. It's up and running straight away. And if you knew how much you wanted and you had a table that you were going to be using for a, a prolonged period, like a couple of years, you can click on reserve capacity on the left hand side and you can purchase reserve capacity and you'll get some significant discounts by doing that. So if you know you have a, a table that's going to have some heavy reads and writes going forward, you would purchase reserve capacity. OK, so that's a very basic overview of DynamoDB. You just need to remember that it's instantly scalable and it's a NoSQL database. Hey, want to become an expert in cloud computing? Then subscribe to Simply Learn's channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in cloud computing, click here.